Today we're going to replace the headliner on this Honda Civic. This is a 2007 model, but it should be the same on all 8th gen Civics. That's 06 through 11. And it's pretty similar on all Civics of all years and all other Honda types. You might need to change your headliner if it's falling off or sagging down, or if you just want to change the color and get some sort of custom look in your Civic. For me, my headliner is sagging down and I'm tired of looking at it uh, being all saggy. You know, when I roll my windows down, it just blows around. So we're gonna pull this headliner out and replace that. Okay, we're going to need to remove a bunch of things to get this headliner out. You have to take off the handles that you have above the windows there. You have to remove the visors, sun visors, and the little clips that they go into. You have to remove the light assemblies. Um, there's some screws under there. Um, then we'll have to pop some of the trim loose on the pillars uh, in order to get this, this headliner former down. The headliner's kind of a form. Uh, it's basically a piece of cardboard that's in the proper shape. Uh, but we need to get that out in order to recover it. Okay, we've got to start somewhere. We might as well start with these sun visor clips. Pressed in this little hole with the screwdriver to release a tab. And then the whole thing will rotate. Just like that. So here's a little better view of the sun visor clip. You're pressing in that little hole, you're pressing against that little tab, and it kind of allows you to rotate it and pull it out. So set these to the side. All right, next we'll go ahead and take the visors all the way off. So where the visor mounts into the roof, there's a little plastic piece of trim kind of covering. Um, I have a little trim tool, uh, but you can use a flathead screwdriver. One tip, if you don't want to scratch up things with a screwdriver, wrap some tape around your screwdriver before you start that way. It's less prone to scratching everything up. Now it's flexible enough to go ahead and push it off the sun visor and get it out of your way. Now we can see these two screws. They are Torx screws or star bits, but there is a slot for a flathead screwdriver if you don't have any Torx tools. They're not really very tight in there, so a screwdriver works fine. I'm going to take both of these screws out, and then the whole visor will just pull off. Got the driver's side done. Came off easy. I'll repeat, repeat the process on this passenger side and get this visor off. Next, we'll get this light assembly out of here. So you should be able to take a small screwdriver and just kind of pry the, the clear glass out of there. Just like that and then use your hands just pull it out don't drop it like i did there you go now you'll see a couple phillips screws that you need to take out uh, there's one here and one right there so get those two screws out of there all right i've got my two screws out now that the screws are out the whole light assembly will kind of pull out of the headliner And there's a wire there um, just it's pretty self-explanatory just unplug this this wire here and the, the assembly will be disconnected there you go i just disconnected that wire and now that's removed and now there's not much holding the front of our headliner on another thing you can do instead of bagging the the bolts is just kind of restart them back up into the ceiling where they go that way they're there and you won't lose them Okay, we're gonna keep working our way back. Now we're gonna deal with these handles. So if you pull the handle down, you'll see there's a cap, like a trim cap. There's a little tiny hole there. You can stick a little screwdriver in there and kind of pop this cap open. So do that on, on both sides. And then it kind of pulls out, the whole thing pulls out. So it's sort of pressed in there. So remove those on both sides. Now that those caps are removed, you can see how these are mounted. So there are two metal tabs here. Get yourself, you can use your fingers if you can reach, but it's easier just to get some needle nose pliers. Grab those two metal tabs and squeeze them together. Um, that's it. And the whole, the whole thing just pulls off that easy. That's it. Now my, uh, my handles totally removed. Pretty easy to get those out of there. So 
get all four of your handles removed just the same way. The metal tabs might pull out with your door handle like this, or they might actually stay up in the roof of the car. And either way is fine. You're not really going to screw them up. They just press right back into the, the ceiling of the car. For example, I can squeeze this and, and uh, pop it out of there. And they just literally press into the, the ceiling of your car. So if the metal tabs decide to stay in your ceiling, go ahead and just kind of pull them out of there. Now we need to get this kind of rear light assembly removed. So go ahead, same kind of thing as the front. Try to pry off some of the little glass cover as careful as you can. There it goes. Now we'll see, again, two screws in the corners there. Get those Phillips screws removed. All right, once those screws are removed, the whole thing should pull down again. So it looks like the wire's in a little clip. Pull it, out, pull it out of the little clip so the wire gets loose and then you can disconnect this plug here. Okay, now we have all the handles, the visors, the light assemblies removed. The only thing holding this thing in are, is the trim on the pillars. So now we gotta go ahead and pop loose the trim on the pillars, the back and kind of middle pillar there. I'll show you how to pull those loose so that we can get access to Go ahead and pull this headliner all the way out of here. Uh, the headliner is kind of tucked up under this door seal here. So you can just pull the door seal off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this down all the way around here. And you can see it just presses in there. There is no glue or anything. So it should be safe to go ahead and pull that off um, as much as you need to. With that door seal off, you can clearly see the edge of the headboard here, headliner. So that's free. And now you can kind of see the clips on this trim as well. I'm going to do the same thing on this back door. Uh, I'm just going to pull the kind of seal off. This whole center trim just pulls off. It just pulls off uh, on each side. There's the, the one kind of clip right here, and there's one down low. And once you get it loose, you can't just pull it out. You have, to, you have to pull the lower piece of the trim off as well a little bit. And then once you do that, this top half of it, you can lower down. See that, how it lowers down? Now it's down far enough to not be in my way for the headboard here. And my fingers have that nasty foam all over it, so I'm getting it everywhere, but you might wanna wear rubber gloves if it gets too nasty. So now it's really just getting it freed up from the backside there. Okay, so I, I didn't get it on video, but I wanted to show you how it's made back here. I pulled the door rubber seal off the edge first just to get some more room. And then I did go ahead and pull off this panel, at least on the top half. So there's a, a clip on the top, you see that red clip? just kind of presses into that hole in the body back in there can't really see it but kind of right here there's a hole just presses in and down on the bottom there's another clip see that white clip there it just presses into this black kind of grommet that one's a little tough to get out but be patient and it'll pop out so now this is really loose it's not nothing holding me in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side loose and the whole thing ought to pull right out. I think my headboard's ready to pull out. And if you're wondering, you have to fold the seat, the rear seats down in order to pull the headboard out. Uh, give yourself a big enough opening to pull it out through the trunk. Um, this is the, the cloth on my headboard. It is kind of in the way, but I'm not gonna pull it off because that foam will just go everywhere in my car. Um, but I did want to show you here in the back. Now this, this trim is loose. You can kind of, now once I get two hands free, you can pull this down enough to get this cardboard headliner former pulled kind of over the trim and out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now my headliner's on the outside of the trim there. I'm freed up entirely along the back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this seat down. 
And if you didn't know, surely you know how to put your seat down, but if you don't, there's a little lever right here you just pull on and your seats will, your seats will fold down. Okay, I was able to fish the front half out. Um, the wiring that goes to your lights is probably taped down with some high temp duct tape, basically. So let's take, peel that off. Okay, I've got that wiring for the lights kind of untaped from the, from the headliner there. I'm gonna go to the passenger side and kind of pull that forward. And then the whole thing, I need to pull it forward to get it around the, the snaps in the back side by the back windshield. All right, now I've got nothing holding it down. The headliner is totally down. I just now have to fish it out through the rear trunk as best I can. All right, it's out of there in one piece. It didn't really tear it any, but I did have to fold it more than I liked kind of here in the back just to get it to fit out of the, through the, the rear seat hole to get it out of the trunk there. Um, I'll get it out, kind of lay it flat, see how it looks. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's in one piece. See how that's kind of folded here pretty good. It should hold up fine once it gets reinstalled. Um, another thing I noticed when I was first pulling it out, I didn't know about these clips in the back. Um, so these clip plates are just glued onto the, the headboard here. This one sort of tore off, it's loose. So I will have to probably take this all the way off, clean up the back with the wire wheel maybe, and then re-glue it down um, just so that it holds good. So here's the inside of my car. I, I left the, the cloth on as best I could, but I still got that nasty old foam everywhere. So just be careful. If you're worried about it, put a sheet down maybe or something. Well, my old cloth didn't have any tears. It just was sagging. So the foam just failed. So I'm gonna have a look at about how much it's overlapped here. Looks like they've only overlapped it about half inch or so. And barely any overlapping on the sides. So they didn't really overlap it any on the sides, not much at all, if any. I don't think any. And that's probably where it started flapping in the wind and kind of started to started to sag. So I'm gonna pull it off of here. Now the fun part begins. We've got to scrape all this old foam off because you can't glue your new cloth right to this old foam. The old foam is already trash. It comes right off. That's why it failed in the first place. That's why that cloth failed because that foam just deteriorated over the years. You can scrape it off with a, like, get something like a barbecue grill wire brush. Get like a, get a new one and don't, don't use your old greasy grill brush. Go buy a new grill brush and, and you can use that to kind of scrape all, this all off or any tool you can find. I might use an actual scraper just to get the big stuff off. So let's go to town and clean this baby up. I'm gonna wear some rubber gloves because this stuff's nasty and scrape off as much as the big stuff that I can.
All right, so this is what I ended up with after cleaning. And I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look very clean, but trust me, this thing is as clean as I can get it. I spent two or three hours just doing nothing but scrubbing on this thing uh, with different kinds of tools. I at first thought I would get off easy and I used a, a brass wire wheel and a brass cup wheel just to try it. It kind of worked, but what I found with this, this headliner material is so thin, it started eating away, um, taking chunks out of it. And I didn't really like that. I didn't want to do that all across there. Otherwise it would become too weak, too thin. So that was not really an option. I tried really high air pressure with my air compressor and just blowing off some of the foam. That actually did work for some of the bigger pieces of, of foam that was left over. Um, I tried, you know, a good old steel brush, wire brush here. Um, it worked pretty good, but what the best combination I found for me was I would, I got some rubbing alcohol that you'd have, you probably have around your house. I put, put a little squirt on there, not too much <clears throat> due to the material this is. It's, it's pretty weak and you don't want to get it soaked. But I put just a little bit of rubbing alcohol in an area and then take the wire brush and go back and forth pretty vigorously. And it, it would come, it started coming off pretty good. It's, it was still difficult to get all that, the glue and foam remnants off because um, it kind of went everywhere as you scrub it. But I, what I did was you just kind of start in in one area, one corner, and go one direction with with your scraping and kind of push all the goo, keep pushing it the same direction. And then I just worked little little sections at a time, kind of made a little grid almost, and pushed it all to one way until I finally got it done. Um, and like I said, this doesn't look very clean, but it is clean. Like this, this is glue left over from that old phone that's kind of soaked into that fiberglass material that's why it's all brown looking so here's the top side of my headline i just wanted to show you what it looked like and it's basically made out of a, a fiberglass type of particle board type of stuff um you can kind of see it almost feels like styrofoam but but heavier duty so it's some kind of light fiberglass is what it is but i just wanted to show you this um i did re-glue these little cloth pads down because they kind of fell off just so they would stay in place when i put it back in and this is the back side. There's these two snaps that uh, go up into the car ceiling. And this one kind of ripped off. So I did I did glue that down with, with some uh, Gorilla Glue there. Should hold down well. Okay, I wanted to show you my old cloth and the old color of it and how I went about finding a replacement. Um, so this is the old cloth. And I found this place online. They're on eBay and they also just have a website called Moonlighting Auto Tops. Um, and what you can do is you can go into their site and they have a bunch of different colors. You can select as many colors as you want and they will send you like a free sample of uh, colors. That way you can, you can order a sample and then figure out what exact color you want. And then, uh, then you can go ahead and make the purchase from them. So that's what I did. This is Moonlighting Auto Tops and I selected a bunch of different tans and beiges. I was trying to get as, as close to the original color as I could. Here are the, the four samples I got back from this company. Obviously that one's way too dark. This one's more of a charcoal color. These two were fairly close. Um, couldn't get it perfectly close. I ended up going with this one here. Um, I think that's close enough. I think that's close enough to the original to, to make it look pretty decent in there. So I chose the color I was happy with and ordered a roll of that material to do my job. And here it is, it came in a nice roll instead of being all folded up. Um, that that way it shouldn't have any creases in it. It's definitely wide enough. You can see it laid on top of the original there and it should definitely be long enough once I roll it out there. Just to get a bit of a closer view here, here's the material um, and you can see it's it's glued onto a foam backing. The foam backing's not not super thick. It's probably less than a quarter inch thick, um, but that's all I need. And there's different brands of headliner adhesive, but I went ahead and went with the 3M type, the 3M brand, after reading a bunch of reviews. There's a couple other brands that are pretty good as well, but like I said, just get a reputable one that's made specifically for a headliner. That way it can withstand the, the high heat that the inside of your car might, might see. All right, now when you're handling your new material, obviously make sure you have clean hands or clean rubber gloves on or something. I'm gonna go ahead and put my new material on, just kind of lay it on and see if I need to trim it in advance any.
Okay, so I've laid it on there and I seem to have several inches of overlap on all sides of this thing, so it should be plenty of material. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna try to start there in, in the center around where the dome light is. So I'm gonna spray that. I'm kinda gonna try to work on one kind of quadrant at a time. Maybe roll it out evenly until you get to a kind of a harder area, like the indentation where the door handles go. And then I'll work on that area, kinda get that straightened out. And then you just keep working and just st stretch the wrinkles out as much as you need to, but don't overstretch this thing. Otherwise it could fail on you early again. And it looks like this front half is probably the harder one with the indentations from the sun visors and the, the two lights and the door handles both. So I'm going to knock this out first. Try to press it down in those indentations for the, the dome light. All right, here's my headliner. I've got it all glued down. I do need to turn it over and kind of wrap the headliner material around and get it glued down on the top, make it overlap a couple inches, but it looks decent. Could have done a little bit better. I'd just say take your time on the areas that need pressed down into the indentations um, and give yourself plenty of material to push down in those indentations. Don't try to, to stretch it. Um, you can't really stretch this material. If you do, it'll just not stick well. Um, but it doesn't look too bad. There's a couple areas that could be a little bit better, but I'll turn it over. I'll get it wrapped around there uh, and glued down and we'll go from there. I didn't get it all on video, but I went around the entire headliner and folded over about an inch to one to two inches of overlap, kind of wrapped around and glued it down all the way around. You just have to be careful on the corners, kind of give yourself enough extra material to accommodate for the corners. I got a little short right here, but I think it'll be okay still right there. But uh, everywhere else looks pretty good. 
Now I do have to deal with these dome light holes. So I'm going to have to kind of cut this out right here and kind of wrap this over and kind of glue it down on around the, the perimeter of this hole. And there's another hole there. All right, I went ahead and cut out my holes for the dome lights. I went ahead and put the big dome light actually in place just to kind of help hold that fabric down. Uh, and then I went ahead and glued it. So I'm not gonna take that dome light back out for, until this glue is dry. All right, here is the top side of my headliner finished. Got the dome lights cut out, some foam wrapped around there. Um, I've got holes poked in everywhere. I think I need them poked to mount the visors and handles back on. So now let's flip this thing over and see what it, what it turns out looking like. It doesn't look too bad. There's a couple little wrinkles that I could have done better on around where the, the handles go. But I think once I get those handles mounted, you're probably not even going to see those. Um, and these are kind of where the visors mount. Um, it's sticking up a little here in the corner. But again, when that visor lays flat here, you're probably not even going to see that. I'm not too concerned about a couple of tiny wrinkles given the, the kind of big job this is and I'm not a pro and you know what for about a 60 bucks or whatever I spent on the foam plus a little bit of glue um, it's going to look way better than the old headliner that was flapping in the wind so I'm pretty satisfied with it now uh, once you once you know that that glue is nice and dry go ahead and work on installing this back into your car okay before you try to put the headliner back in go ahead and vacuum out your trunk make sure there's none of that old uh, old nasty foam chunks laying around that's going to get your new headliner all dirty when you put it in there when you you know when you slide it across the the floor so make sure it's clean enough and then make sure you're putting your headliner in the right direction with the dome light hole forward and the right way up and let's go ahead and try to fit it in there It's in there. You do have to gently fold the headliner a little bit to get it to fit through the trunk hole, but you can get it in there. Um, and when you you know unfold it and put it into place, it should go ahead and look look normal again. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my dome light wiring kind of taped back on or back underneath of that tape that's there. Uh, the longer wire goes to the, the back dome light, obviously. On my wire harness. I got, a, I got a clue here because there's a piece of the old tape stuck on it. So where the wire harness comes out of the, the frame of the car, the pillar, that's about where it goes under this first piece of tape. You can kind of feel the wires and see where it's sticky, and that's where it used to be underneath the tape. Just put that area of the wire back under the tape. All right, in the back here, it's best if you can find yourself an assistant or an extra set of hands to help you hold it up. You can do it by yourself, but it makes it a little bit easier. So all we're doing here in the back is just fitting in the back corners back under that trim on the pillars. So the only thing that really holds it back there is the trim on each pillar and then those two snaps in the center of the headliner. So do what you can to fit those those rear corners back under the trim and then press those two trim snaps back up into the ceiling of the car and that's really all that holds it back there now that the back end of the headliner is being held into position by those corner trim panels and the center snaps you can move yourself to the front of the headliner and work on that if you still have an assistant to kind of hold up the middle area that would be helpful but it's not required um, in the front it's best to go ahead and insert the dome light and get that mounted. To, it will it will hold the whole headliner up for you as you work on the other pieces. So before you put the dome light in, don't forget to reconnect the wire that goes to it. Once that wire is connected, go ahead and install the dome light and, and then put the screws back in uh, to the ceiling of the car. That'll hold the whole thing in. 
And then you can move on to working on the front corners, making sure those front corners of the headliner are tucked underneath of the trim pieces on the front pillars. Um, and then from there, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so let's get this piece of side trim back in. We are going to get push, press it up and get this clip back in the hole where it goes. And then that clip right behind the seat belt there back into the hole that it goes. It'll kind of line up into some holes and it'll pop into place. So on the inside here, this white clip goes up into that hole right there. And this little prong here, this plastic tab kind of goes into the sort of seat belt hole right there. And then there's a couple of plastic clips, one on either side that press into a couple of holes in the pillar. That's about it. It's pretty self-explanatory there. The door seal then just presses back into place, kind of holds on, kind of hold, helps hold this trim on and helps hold the head the headliner in. And then in the back here, let's just tuck, make sure your headliner's tucked up under there. And there's a couple of clips, that red one and this white one, that just kind of press in place. And then there, if you remember on top of the headliner, there's two clips kind of one right in here and one right in here. Make sure those are fit in the hole and pressed up in. All right, now we can get this center dome light put back in. So your wire should be ready to grab. Make sure it's connected, plugged in. Press it till it kind of clicks. And then just uh, screw it back into position. Give it a little test, make sure the light works. All right, let's go ahead and make sure our dome light's tight here now, uh, if, if you haven't done that already. Then we're gonna show you how to just put one of those handles back in. We'll do the driver's side handle. And you may have to do a little trimming on the holes you made, but maybe not. I might trim it just a hair more. Move to the passenger side because I have some better video here. But to install these handles, it's not too hard. Just put the metal tabs into the plastic door handles and then press them into position into the holes on the body. If they feel really loose, that's normal. Uh, they don't really get tight until you install that plastic trim cap back into position. That plastic trim cap is shaped like a wedge almost and it kind of presses in there and holds that metal tab apart into position. Once those plastic caps are back in there, your door handle will be nice and firm again. Let's put the uh, door sill back into position on the front door here. I forgot about this one. Let's put the front passenger door sill back into position. For this uh, visor kind of clip, remember to take it out, we just rotate it at 90 degrees. So we're gonna stick it in 90 degrees uh, rotated and then rotate it back to the straight position. Something like that. 
putting the visors in is pretty easy. The only hard part is getting the cloth headliner material trimmed out of the way enough to get those two screws started. Once those screws get started, just tighten them up snug, and then you can put that plastic trim cap back around the visor there. Alright, this visor's on. Now we just repeat the process for the driver's side visor. All right, let's put the dome light cover back on. Just sort of presses on. Let's put the front dome cover back on, dome light cover. All right, this job is now complete. We've got this headliner put in here. Looks a heck of a lot better than it did, all saggy and droopy. Um, yeah, there's a couple little wrinkles uh, here and there, but it looks pretty darn good for doing it yourself. And you know, you get some satisfaction to doing a job yourself and saving a bunch of money doing it yourself. So don't be afraid to try this out. It's not that hard. It's reserved a lot of time. I, I did it over a couple of days just so I didn't get frustrated by it, you know? So um, hope this video helped you all out. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Thank you.